Thanks, Jim. Justin Stone here from EliteBaseball.tv coming to you with our tip of the week. And today's tip comes from a question about tea use. And we're going to talk today how about the tea can be both beneficial if used correctly, but also harmful if you're not using it right. So to start with, oftentimes when we get players that are 7, 8, 9 years of age, we hear dads tell us that they're fighting with their sons because the son doesn't want to use the tea anymore because they're out of tea ball. And the tea is used for little kids that can't hit a moving ball yet. As we know, progressing in the game, even our big league guys are using the tee as the most basic fundamental tool for hitting. Reason being is we take the variable of the moving ball out of the equation. So we're simply working on our body, body pattern and mechanics. The tee is the best place to do that if we utilize it correctly. So we're gonna go over some key points here, how you make sure you're getting valuable use out of your tee and doing it the right way. First, when we set up on the tee, oftentimes youth players will put the tee right in the middle of their body. So over and over again, they're getting down on the ball and knocking the tee over with a steep swing. We want to make sure when we align ourselves on the tee that I start behind the tee. And however long my stride is, we want it to land even with the ball. So a player may need to take a couple of practice strides to make sure their normal stride length is taking place and they're still landing even with the tee. Direction is very important, and that's one of the th reasons why I really like the tee, because a lot of amateur hitters have poor direction. And I always say, nothing will ruin a good hand path quicker than a bad stride foot. So when we take the moving ball out of the equation, we can focus more on what our body parts are doing, specifically where my stride foot is landing. And I want to make sure that I'm creating good alignment with my toes, and I'm not striding across my back shoe, which is going to elongate my swing pattern, forcing me to cast around my body and then hook around the baseball, as well as making sure we're not opening up too much and losing our plate coverage. What I'll have players do that struggle with direction is simply put a piece of duct tape down, whether that's in their garage, whether their basement, wherever they're doing their tee work, and that way we can check that our toes are maintaining their line and we have a visual cue that the hitter can work on. Next, as we continue into our tee progression, we have to set that same direction with our eyes. I find players a lot, especially as they get older, people tell them you need to work hard to be a good baseball player. So we have these players that I'm going to spend more time in the cage or more time on the tee and get more swings than everybody else. And then over time it becomes mindless hitting. And oftentimes they're hitting right into a net that may be five feet in front of them. So what do they do? Instead of creating direction with their eyes out front on the pitcher and then dropping their nose down to the ball, the same head pattern that would be tracking a baseball out of the hand, they start their tee routine by staring at the baseball. Now my head turns inward towards home plate and because of course it's connected to my torso through my neck, my shoulder turns with it. And now we create an over-rotated torso in our tee work that is going to cause the torso to block my hands being unobstructed to the ball. So if we have an obstruction, the hands have to clear a path around the torso in a longer pattern that often causes players to, again, hook the baseball in an improper path. T height is very important. I prefer that our players work with the T almost as low as it'll go, certainly below the waist, I like it mid-thigh, or for our older players, I like to challenge them by making the tee even lower yet. The reason being, posture is very difficult to hold for all amateur hitters. And when I maintain good posture throughout the swing, I have a chance for my barrel to stay through its extension point in a correct path. We get players because they're not very strong in their core, especially our youngest ones, that begin to stand straight upright as they swing, and that's going to cut their bat out of the hitting zone and off their front hip prematurely. So the old adage of keep your eye on the ball really is a posture cue. Our eye isn't fast enough to see the ball-bat collision. However, by keeping our head down as we get through contact, we generally maintain a good chin-over-toes posture that we want to keep all the way through the swing and its extension point. This gives us a chance, if we have miscues in timing, that our bat is still in the hitting zone. So what do I ask our players to do at the end of the swing? We want players to learn about mechanics by being perceptive of their body. That means we need to feel what our body parts are doing in space. The great way to do that is challenging your players on the tee to hold their balance for a second or two when they're done, rather than just immediately going to pick up the baseball. 
By doing so, balance isn't gonna make our swing better at the end, but it's gonna tell us, if I can't hold that position, we have something going on that we need to fix in that swing. Generally, it's gonna be players falling over the tee when they're completing with their swing. Because oftentimes, our amateur players get too much pressure on their toes, and that causes them to get to a poor heel plant position with my front shoe. I can't stabilize and drive through the lower body, and I'm gonna to topple over up top. So those are some common things that we see with youth hitters doing incorrectly, that just if we simply pay attention to it, we can make those small adjustments with our tee work. The tee again is designed to allow us to use correct mechanics and be perceptive of those mechanics so I can make easy adjustments throughout my swing. That's a lot harder to do once we get a moving pitch coming at us because we incorporate timing, which is such a bigger part of whether I'm has success or failure at the ball back collision. Take timing out, work on hitting in its most basic form, and that's going to be off of a tee. So there's some common misteaches that we see off the tee, some common miscues, and how to use your tee more productively in your next tee session, whether that be at home or in your cage. Until next week, this is Justin Stone with EliteBaseball.tv, and we'll see you on the field.